everyone, and welcome to another quad framing instructional video session. Uh, I've had a lot of requests uh, over the last few months, actually, about how to build a wall in Photoshop where you can uh, take some of these frames and arrange them for people, because a lot of times they, they really struggle with uh, being able to envision uh, what a finished product would look like with two or three different pieces. And it's actually quite simple. And first of all, I want to thank Teresa Berg, a client of ours, a uh, wonderful photographer, and uh, we had just done this this week, and so I uh, asked her if I could use her samples uh, to show you guys. Um, and so if you see any problems in the images, it's not her work. It's because I actually laid out the pieces that she sent me, uh, and I photographed them from above, so I didn't do a, a great job. But just as a reminder, in ProSelect, uh, you can just go under Album, and you can either add a folder of images, in this case, I'm just going to add one image. My finder comes up, uh, and I can select either the folder or the uh, image, and I'm going to bring it in. So again, uh, sorry about the glare. That was my fault, not Teresa's. Uh, so let's say we're going to build this type of frame right here. We just make sure we're under layouts, because that's where all the mats are. Uh, we can select a mat. And if you notice, the uh, orientation of this mat is incorrect for uh, the image, so I'm going to rotate it. And then I'll grab my image and drag and drop. And then I'm going to go in and I'm just going to add a molding. I happen to know I'm looking for C13, and there it is. Okay, so now the goal is to get this into some emailable fashion. Now, there is a, you know, you can email it out as a PDF uh, through ProSelect. Um, but if you want to build a little bigger system, let me show you what the goal is. Uh, sorry about the Photoshop palettes here. Let me bring up the piece that we did. Okay, so in Photoshop, we ended up creating several of these uh, pieces, and there's even more than that, actually. But what that allows Teresa to do is to turn on and off what she wants in her arrangement, and then uh, send that off to the client to get the final approval. Uh, so it's very convenient, saves Teresa a meeting, uh, and just works efficiently. So let me show you a few uh, tricks of the trade. If you're not familiar with them, you might be. Um, you can see that my pointer here, uh, if on a Mac, if you select Shift Command 4, it turns into this target. You can simply go up to your corner here. Little difficult to see on the, on the black background, but uh, once you get it in place, just click and drag. And when you get to the final point you can just let go okay and you heard maybe the camera sound there the shutter uh, that means it is now in your system and so you can go to finder and for us it's typically on your desktop on a Mac uh, that it shows up and it shows up under screenshots hold on just a second here and usually the last one you took is the last item uh, listed under screenshots you can tell I use it a lot uh, and there it is. So now in Photoshop, all we have to do is file open. So you could actually skip that last step if you know how to do this uh, and go straight here to your screenshot, open it. And in Photoshop, you get this JPEG that opens up. All right. Now, the best way for me, anyway, is I always uh, use Command-J to make a copy of that. Let's pull this out of the way. Let's open up a wall. Now, two things you can do here. If you're going to use it uh, for the web, and I'll just put Teresa's wall. Oops. Okay. Uh, I typically use 11 by 8.5 because if I happen to need to print it off, then it's all set up that it can, it can be done that way. Um, the resolution, typically you'd want 300 for that, but if you're going to be emailing it around, which is more likely nowadays, then just set it up at 72 DPI and uh, it should be fine. Okay, so I'm going to move my palette just a little bit out of the way here. Here's that wall we just created. Command minus makes the image smaller. And let me just pull this out. There we go. All right. Uh, some folks draw lines to kind of give it more of the panorama uh, view. You don't really need to do that. Uh, I'm going to go back to my screenshot here, take that one layer, and just drag it over, and there it is. Another great shortcut is Command-T to transform. 
just hold down your shift key to uh, maintain um, the proportions. And you're going to just take kind of a guess at it on the first one, okay? And you need to know the dimensions of your first image. Uh, in this one, I think it was an 8 by 10 so I might even make this smaller, all right? Uh, and then ultimately what you're going to do is just keep bringing those in. And you, you don't always have to do as many as we did. Um, it's, it can be a much faster process. Uh, but sometimes they might want to look at one with a mat and uh, without a mat. Uh, you know, with a certain molding, without a certain molding, or there's the one without a mat, there's the one with a mat, um, or changing out various components, okay? Uh, so you, it's your luxury on what you want to do there. One more thing I do want to show you is if you don't use Pro Select, that's fine. Uh, many of our clients don't. Uh, but what I want to show you is from our website, once you log in and you build your frame, uh, and you you know go under and find your molding and, and select it uh, then once you're ready you can simply click on that image uh, to expand it and what that will do is give us a better screenshot uh, so you once again do shift command 4 come over and do your screenshot alright so you don't need pro select to accomplish the, uh, the exact same thing Okay, so that's really it for this one. Um, all you need to do then from here is you can send it out as a JPEG or save it out as a PDF, uh, and hopefully it'll make your day more efficient uh, when working with a client. Thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you soon.